welcome to my studio and thank you for having me come into yours and for those of you who are familiar with my work I'm Robin McClendon and for those of you who may just have stumbled across this channel welcome please um, if you like what you're seeing subscribe hit the bell so you get all the notifications I come every Saturday and um, as a mixed-media artist I do lots of things in my studio and you know for the last several years I've shown a lot of things but it's kind of been in a limited category um, just mostly my art journals but as a mixed-media artist I'm a printmaker I make paper I do encaustic wax I do large-scale paintings I do a lot of stuff and as I continue to grow and I move into next year with the release of my my book and things like that I'm realizing that I'm also growing and expanding a lot um, writing the book has given me a, a, a lot of time to be pensive about what is important in my work what I want to most communicate in that book um, what I want to share most and with this being my first published book I really wanted to think about what I'm putting out into the world because it's out there for a long time you know and so as I started thinking about that I realized I wanted to show more of the work that I do as an artist and I always love vlogs I, I mean, when I look at other channels I just love vlog style and so many content creators who do sort of my more cinematic types of that those things just they like art to me and they're just so inspirational and so I wanted to begin to work the my YouTube videos and the things I share with you guys more into um, sort of more cinematic more vlog style and as I break ground on my land and work on those projects there's so much there that I want to share with you all and as I move into that studio that's going to be so much larger I'm going to have be able to show more sort of like behind the scenes kind of things of encaustics and paper making and just so many things so me and my team are beginning to work through what cinematic videos would look like for Robin McClendon, you know, for my particular brand and how we'll bring that material to you in a way that's interesting and still inspirational. So many of you follow me in Patreon or in my Facebook group. Um, and so there's a lot of those places that we can engage for free or for small amounts of money. I'm still going to be bringing material here on um, YouTube. It's definitely going to be more inspirational, but of course there will always be links to things that I'm doing or if you want to do deeper dives, um, that'll be fine. But the channel is going to be very inspirational. I want to inspire you, continue to inspire you as artists um, who are connecting with me and my style, but maybe even go deeper and hopefully a little further. Not so much tutorials, though there'll be we're hoping to design these in a way that there's still um, so much that you can get from them and be able to use them in your own work and yet at the same time maybe more inspirational so hopefully that's making sense as we continue to work on this project we'll get a lot of the bugs out love to get a lot of feedback from you all of what you love what you want to see more of um, I want to do more studio shares, the kind of papers that I create that you don't always see or the things that are in my baskets or the, my collections and the things that I do use in my work. Um, so we'll do more of that and I know many of you have asked me, can I see more of the papers that you have on that shelf behind you or can we see more of the, um, the things that you've swirled away in all your baskets and stuff like that that you're using and so I hope to bring more of that kind of content as well. So today, as we continue to work in our cabinet of curiosities, I'm hoping to begin to show you some of the vision for what I'm seeing and what I'm hoping will be inspirational as we move forward. So I'm going to do more sort of like talking about what was in my mind and how I created things. But we're going to do flips. I'll show you the created pages and then in between or, you know, my you know my videographer she's just amazing and so 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 creative I'm thinking that we're gonna be able to tell a story and sort of weave a tale around how I've created the pages or the inspirational aspects of them so let's have at it let's see how it goes and I'm excited to hear 
what you know what you um, liked about the video and what you'd like to see more of and that kind of thing and mid, for many of you you may not like this style you may like oh I would have preferred the the old style and where I can appreciate that we were moving forward from that so where there might, I won't say there won't be ever any of that they're going to it's going to be less and more compilation of so many other ways that I want to bring material to you so I just want to say that I'm going to acknowledge that part of it okay so last week you know we did this we worked together on this i loved the colors we had a lot of aha moments with the beautiful you know using seth's eyes inks with the um yamabudu which is in the ira shizuki fountain pen inks we love those and i just really love the way this came together so i think when i moved over to this page remember we did some stamping and i knew i was going to come back to this what happened is there was a lot of bleed through from the other side, which I love. And I just didn't want to get rid of this. This is our cabinet of curiosities. This is like, it's not only just grunge, but it's about, you know, the stories that all of these pages are telling and the journeys that they take us on. And so it's a, it's a mixed mixing of my, you know, art and my calligraphy and my ink blots along with imagery from maybe slides and you know vintage papers etc right and we're, we're doing it in the sort of the junk journaling style of flips and pockets and things because as a cabinet of curiosities we have to have places to store things right so these are the last few pages that we've done as we moved into this page and so when we got here with all the over stamping I didn't want so much green but I did appreciate the green and I liked when I over stamped it with the um, the gold from my my new stamps um, line so I didn't want to get rid of all of it but I did want to begin to integrate it with I don't know I kind of got a feeling of a little bit more Baroque um, style and I wanted to bring frab fabrics in so on this page what I did is I used this print it's from an old document and I, I reproduce it and use it a lot in my work. I love, love, love this. And this is in one of my printables. I think it's in the, one of the very early printables like February or March of 2020, I believe. And so there are some papers in there that will have this in there. And then this is just a piece of sort of satin lace that I found at one of the, you know, antique stores or goodwill or somewhere like that i don't know where i got a big piece of it and i just loved it at the time i that i got it like that silvery color but it's cool which i'm happy with but i took some of the gold paint some of golden's the iridescent um, bronze and i just dry brush a bit of it and it caught on the higher edges of it so not only did it grunge it up a little bit but it warmed it up just a little bit so that it mixed in more with the golds that i had intended to use on these other pages and I really like the simplicity of I mean I think it's complex enough it's enough for your eye to fall on with all the scripting and stuff that's going on behind it and the stamping but yet it's it kind of calms it down and I liked the fact that the leaf pattern here was repeated with the leaf patterns here so just subtle things going on there and on this page this is a piece of vintage wallpaper I mean it's really super thick and so I decided to make it a pocket here again it repeats the leaf pattern this is like from the 40s or the 50s this this pa um, paper and it's got flocking on it so this leaf is this sort of flocking pattern and so it's like this subtle nod to what we have going on in this page but yet I'd say it's like definitely different these pages work together but they really still are different however you know the feather sort of picks up this sort of leaf pattern or the you know these shapes are repeating themselves and even here to here you know this is a feather a found object and yet it really you know once I got it down I kind of like really kind of roughed it up a bit so that it wasn't so perfect and it, I felt like it started picking up the theme of the leaves and other things like that. I wanted to make it a flip because a few things. This is some flocked paper that I got a long time ago. I mean, a few years back and I coffee stained it. 
and what have you and um and then I, and you can see the staining on the back. It's got this grid pattern. I always like that. So I didn't want to just glue it down and make a pocket. So I decided I wanted to flip. And I also still wanted to see what was underneath here because I like that pattern. And it gives us a place to put some things, which I got a few ideas. It's just a narrow place to stick something in. And I also sort of made this a pocket too. So I could stick things down in there. And I'm thinking I may make some using the, um, the slide, not the slides, but the the clear paper, the transparency film. Um, I may capture some some sort of leaves, you know, flora and fauna in those, and stick them down in these pockets. And I have other places that I want to stick them. So I think I'm going to do a just a session, and I'll carry you along with me, where I'm going to just turn a lot of things that I've been pressing in a magazine into some flora and fauna that I'm going to use a transparency film and probably some onion skin behind it to give it that old world look and put them in these pockets. So that's why I wanted to make sure I had some a few more pockets going. Here, this is another piece from one of my um, uh, printables. I think this is Amadeus, which is 21, I think February or March, I think February of 2021. And so some of you may already have that and recognize it. And I really like doing the ink staining to make it, you know, where the torn paper is. I like to get that bleeding going. And I really liked how the bleeding happened on this cardstock. And so just getting bits and pieces of that with this silk, this is some old silk fabric and I used I just used the paint you know the Goldens and the Arteza um, Aztec gold and painted it and I just love the way you know it just brings that that element of textile but yet it gives that sort of gold and it really blends in I feel nicely with everything that I've done here so we're you know like there's a lot of odds golds and different pieces here. I just really like how they've come together in this sort of cabinet of curiosity vibe, right? You know, bringing all these sort of desperate pieces together um, and, and, and bringing them into a family, into a unit. Um, so that, and also, and I used this to make this flip by using some of the double-sided tape that I do to clean my gel plates with. This technique will be in the book as well. And I know a few years back, I've shown it. I don't remember if I've shown it here on YouTube. or if I know I've shown it in my, my Patreon group. But it's basically taking double-sided tape and pulling your, your paint off of your gel plate. You know, so you can give it a try. But I love how it really gives this painterly edge. And so you get all that yummy buildup. And it still makes a very strong flip. So we have that, and so now we've done a second page. With these flips, the whole goal of it is we're going to get two to three um, of these page spreads done. That way we work through our cabinet of curiosities a little faster, and um, because there's so many other things I want to show this year, and I realize, wow, we're halfway through the year, and I'm still working on the book. I kind of thought maybe by July I would have been done by now, but... Um, it was taking longer. I had more pages in here than I guess I had counted. So it's okay. So I thought doing it like this too, we get through two to three more page spreads at a time and then we can go on and take some of the stuff we've been working with and I can show you some other structures and some other mixed media ways I work with this, etc. So this is the next page spread and this is very graphic and very abstract. I started with this side um, using some very vintage, very old, this is like, this is definitely 30s wallpaper, you can tell. It's silk screen on it, you can almost sort of see the raised. And I got a lot of this uh, maybe 15 years ago, and it's very crumbly, but I just love it. And so this with this piece of um, stained paper that I had just some um, paint on, and you know, I swiped a little bit of the Goldens on here with my you know my key card just to bring that gold in and then still use some more of this fabric at the top i loved and i just left a little green that page was green just a little green because we had some green in the leaves here just as a nod to what was under there but it was like this 
it's, it's, it's like really abstract to be so kind of specific with this pattern, but this sort of 20s wallpaper is very abstract in its nature anyhow. So it's funny how I felt like it worked with um, this, this full swatch of black there. I don't know, I just had it. I liked it there along with this gold, which we made a little pocket. We used a little bit of that um, vintage fabric and it's, and it's a natural color in the pink, but I felt like it was picking up a lot of the pink purpley colors. And then of course over here, this sort of pink raspberry just becomes like a little tab or a little extra bit on the page. I really liked that. And then I had my gold Sumi ink and I just wanted to go just like abstract. I just wanted to make almost like this gold ink blot type of thing. So you saw me do that and then I came back with a little bit of, you know, finer scripting just to add that little scripted edge to it. And then I had this paper that was from some of my rain stain and I thought it was kind of thick and I wasn't able to separate it. And then when, so I thought it was one sheet and then when I went to put this down, you saw that ink blot and actually in my mind. I was originally, before I put this down, I was thinking I wanted to come back and do some black scripting, but I didn't want it to be too much. So I thought, well, let me just go for the ink block because I don't want it to be like scripting here and scripting here. But I wanted some of the scripted line. So what was a beautiful surprise, and this happens a lot, so keep this in mind when you're working. You just kind of intend, like into your, your workspace, what you're seeing happening. And it's amazing how the right brain, some kind of way, can serve you what you want. And I don't understand how it works, but it happens so much for me. So when I went to put that piece down, I realized this, this top part didn't glue down. I'm like, why didn't it glue down? And when I pulled it up, it was actually two pieces. And when I flipped it over, lo and behold, was some like scripted line that was on the original document before I stained it. Isn't that like crazy? That's the muse. That's the right brain. That is the beauty of just intuitive collaging. And so of course immediately I glued it and flipped it over and I just really like this really abstract, totally unexpected thing that happened. And of course, you know, I used the brush that I had um, used this rab raspberry on when I did this side to kind of create that. So when I picked that up to paint with the gold paint, you could see it, like it bled through a little bit of the raspberry. But when I got to the end of the brush, look at the beautiful, happy color that popped through some of that original raspberry. And it just picks up this raspberry that was in this piece of old wallpaper and I didn't even like consciously think raspberry at all when I selected this. So it's funny how that little bit of green and that little bit of raspberry, you know, like came out in a way that you just couldn't plan it. So the other beauty of me working like this and showing you guys more than one section at a time is that that what will happen and that's what happens when I'm working in my studio. I'm working on more than one project and more than one page in a book at the time. So these type of synchronicities can happen from page to page because I'm still using some of the same materials. Some of the same stuff is on my desk. Some of the same paints or inks or stuff are a little wet still. And, um, and so if I keep on working with them, these type of things would happen that wouldn't happen if I waited like uh, days or another week or so to come back to this um, because those colors would be dry or I would have used that brush and color somewhere else and I wouldn't have had the opportunity to have this like really crazy, beautiful, you know, happy, intuitive thing happen. So um, also remember when I sort of like, um, when I was doing this, I dried off this ink because I wanted to keep on working onto just a piece of book paper sandwiched between this pink and you know I got that really that beautiful repeat line there that will show up in the future you know somewhere in the future here and it'll mimic you know in a very loose way what happened back here so that's why we want to kind of keep all of our scraps and all of our pieces connected to what we're doing and um, the other thing I like is, you know, here again is this leaf 
and um, flower pattern here that started very early over here. And so we just have a lot of these repeats in a very organic way. So I really love how these pages worked out. They're definitely very different and different in, you know, this sort of similar kind of way. So with these pockets here that I've created, I'm looking forward to um, making some with the font. I think I might just do that for one of the next sessions so you guys can see it, me making it. We'll talk through it and, and then I'll start placing them through the journal with you so you can kind of, we can go back through some of these places and place some of these. So I think we'll do that coming up next. But anyway, that's that. I hope you all enjoyed this sort of different approach and this different way of working. Um, and I'm still talking through to show you what I've done, but I think the inspiration appears differently and maybe in a way maybe more cohesive because I'm able to talk completely through the process of how we got from one place to another. So that's that. Once again, remember, please hit the subscribe button if you really like what you saw and you want to keep up with the notifications, hit the all bell. Please hit the, the, the like button below. That always helps us grow and push out and meet new people in our community. And for all of us who've been chatting over in our premier, you know, chat room, you know, as always, I love you guys so much. And I know I'm telling you this right now in the chat that I love you and have a happy week, you know, uh, weekend and creating in your studios. And until next Saturday, from my studio to yours and from my heart to yours, so much love and happy times with creating. Take care. Bye-bye.